everybody, it's Dr. McVeary here, and today we're going to cover oral language development in the early childhood classroom. Oral language development is growth and enculturation and communication skills using spoken words or sounds to express feelings, needs, and ideas. Oral language involves speaking and listening skills. Language, we know, is an innate skill. It is honed, not taught. You will always learn language because it is deeply rooted in culture, so types of oral language skills that we emphasize in different cultures vary. So oral language is made up of at least five components, which are phonological skills, pragmatics, syntax, morphological awareness, and semantics, or vocabulary and background knowledge. All these components of oral language are necessary to communicate and learn through conversation and spoken interaction, especially in languages that have written abilities. When you consider responsive communication and vocabulary and print awareness, early childhood educators can hone these skills. Most research suggests this requires more a partnership with parents rather than simply just classroom interventions. So what does the research say? Acquisition. In terms of early childhood literacy teaching, we know vocabulary knowledge and student knowledge of the structure of language originates from oral language use at home. This influences later literacy skills such as reading and writing. We also must consider how we value and use different syntactic structures of different cultures as an asset in our class and not just as a deficiency that needs intervention. Children bring in a wealth of knowledge of oral language that we need to utilize. Children usually say their first words around 12 months of age. They then experience vocabulary growth, like an explosion between 18 and 24 months. Um, researchers don't really know if this is due to physical development that allow the words to be said, cognitive development, or a mixture of both, or maybe it is just internalizing social developments into our cognitive and physical structures. But we do know that there is a, an explosion of words between 18 and 24 months. And when you get to first grade, estimates kind of vary. Some range from about, you know, 7,800 words to about 17,000 words total. And the number of words that students enter kindergarten with um, in terms of acquisition is often considered an area of research. For example, we look at differences between those of the parents of higher economic status and those who might have, you know, might not be might be below medium or poverty income or have children on free and reduced lunch or other proxies of um of wealth which often in the u.s is, can be a proxy of of race when we're talking urban schools those we look at word differences in acquisitions and people suggest that there might be you know millions and millions of words learned differently in schools of usually rich white parents versus students of parents who may not be above the poverty level or may not have above a high school education. But some of those results in terms of literacy acquisition and language skills acquisitions are also being pulled in um, to debate. Because it really comes down to, in a sense, not how many of the words that our students are using, but really thinking about what are the how does it develop what is the development of oral language and that falls into kind of theories of stages versus non-stages of development in terms of oral language almost everyone agrees on the importance of oral language development mapping to phonemic awareness there is disagreement however in the best sequence for teaching the mapping of phonemes and graphemes stage or phase theories these kind of trace back to gene chaw these development stages of reading are rooted in Piagetian theories of development and philosophies at the heart of today's like modern science of reading construct or the simple view of reading. Well, these rely heavily on these P Piagetian perspectives. Basically, stage theories posit that readers will have specific concrete stages and cognitive structures or schemas at different phases of physical development. According to Ari, um, there are pre-alphabetic stages, partial alphabetic, full alphabetic, and consolidated alphabetic phases when it comes to oral language development. You see here a larger focus on mapping oral language to specific letters, graphemes, and phonemes as precursors to later written language 
and not so much traditions of oral language as storytelling and all, but more a focus on using oral language development as precursors for written language development um, in cultures that stress or have a larger focus on argumentative writing per se versus those cultures who might have more oral language traditions. And that's really, those draw a lot on non-stage theories. And these in non-stage theories, researchers believe there's more of an, um, those incremental like approaches to mapping phonemes and letters through, that happens through oral language development. And it can be, you know, progress. But they argue beginning readers learn words through three factors, phonology, orthography, and semantics. And that we're not just focusing in on mapping our graphemes to our, I mean, our mapping phonemes to letters and, and letters to, to phonics in a sense. So others argue that the syntactic approaches of stage development theories, these reinforce specific cultural behaviors while discounting the syntactic patterns of different families and cultures. For not everyone stresses um, the role of oral storytelling as much as other cultures. And then you also have theories by Godskeen theories of social development, which place much more of a stronger role on what's happening outside of the student when it comes to oral language development than it does when in the more Piagetian theories of